Okay, so our next speaker for today is Mikel Thueka Ten, who will speak about the cohomology of current algebraids and the characteristic classes. Okay, so first of all, I, I want to apologize myself for, for my intervention yesterday in a, in a parallel session. So I just want to say that here. And second, I want to thank the organizer for the opportunity to, to speak here in this conference. So I think that it's really nice to see young people that, that give to us the opportunity to, to also speak. So third, I want to say that this is a joint uh, work with Raj Mehta of Smith College. And it's already on, on archive, so you just can take a look there. So, okay, so let me go ahead and just try to say what is this talk about. So this talk is just about produce new invariants for current algebraids. And when I say invariants, I just will say kind of cohomological invariants. And by that, I mean that current algebraids have an associated differential complex and then they have an associated cohomology. But this cohomology was, and this differential complex was not so easy to, to work with, to study, and then we will just build an explicit description of this differential complex, and that includes some Cartan calculus. The second thing, just we will explain what are representations of a current algebra via just vector bundles with connections. And third, we will introduce these new invariants that are just characteristic classes on this cohomology associated to the current algebra. So let me say that this is just an analogous picture of what happens for Lie algebra. So suppose that you have a Lie algebra, then it is well known that the sections of the exterior power of the dual vector bundle in a richer differential complex with a differential satisfying this kind of Cartan-like formula where you use just the anchor and the bracket of the Lie algebra. And then it is also well known that representations of a Lie algebra are in one-to-one -one correspondence with vector bundles with flat connections. For many propos, maybe you should uh, extend this definition to representations up to homotopy, but I just want to say that the basic representations are given just by vector bundles with flat connections. And then uh, Marius Kreinit and Rui Locha Fernandez were able to construct secondary characteristic classes coming from that joint representation that for Lie algebra is, is something up to homotopy. So what we want to mimic in this talk is just this scheme for current algebra. So let me say some words about current algebra and maybe just to start for a motivating example. So what is a current algebra? So suppose that you have just your manifold and then take your tangent plus cotangent and sum it. Then on this vector bundle, you have the pairing between vectors and covectors and you can project also to the tangent bundle and then you can create this funny bracket. What is important of this bracket and is that appears historically in many situations. For example, the first appearance was in constrained mechanical systems. So if you want to study mechanical system with constraints that the previous talks shows you uh, many of these situations, then the current Dorman bracket appears naturally. Another thing is that many integrability conditions of geometric structures can be also codified as some involutivity for subbundles in this TM plus T stadium. For example, if you have a two form, the two form is closed if and only if the graph of the two form is uh, involutive under this bracket. The same for a bivector. A bivector is Poisson if and only if the graph of the bivector is involutive with, with respect to this bracket. Or for example, generalized complex structure were also involved in this current algebra scheme. So let me give right now a definition. So what is a current algebra in this talk is just a vector bundle 
endowed with three, three structures. First of all, a non-degenerate symmetric pairing, then a vector bundle map, call it the anchor, and then a bracket. Now, the structures, what satisfy is that basically the bracket is a derivation of himself, of the anchor, and of the non-degenerate symmetric pairing. And then we have these four uh, item that is that the bracket is not a skew symmetry, but the skew symmetry is controlled by the pairing. And this is what makes the difference between current algebraids and Lie algebraids. First, we have a pairing, and this pairing is what is controlled, the skew symmetry, or better say, the non-skew symmetry, the loss of skew symmetry of your current algebraid of your bracket. And then what happens is that the theory complaint uh, becomes completely different from the study of, of Lie algebraids. And now let me give some more examples. So for example, if your base manifold, if your vector bundle is just over a point, so if you have just a vector space, then this reduces to a quadratic Lie algebra that is a Lie algebra and though we have pairing that is ad invariant. So why right now is really a Lie algebra is because it's controlled by the pairing, but you have this big D that is coming from the base. So if this big D is just zero because you don't have anything on the base, then your bracket is a skew symmetric, but it's the only situation where the bracket is a skew symmetric. So another example, is just the same as before, as I, I give as, as a motivation, but now twisted with a closed three form. So the H right now is a closed three form on your base manifold, and then you can contract with two vector fields and get just a one form. And this is also another example of current algebraid, or more generally, if you have a Lie by algebraid, then on the sum of the Lie algebra plus the dual, you can also construct a canonical current algebra structure. So this is our more or less the main examples. And what I want to say is some just motivations that can be useful. So for example, if you are aware of just topological field theories, so there is one that is given by a current algebra that is the current sigma model. And this includes the chair simons theory because quadratic Lie algebras are an example of current algebra. Another motivation can be quasi Hamiltonian, the study of quasi Hamiltonian spaces or Poisson Lie duality in order to see these, these dualities or these quasi Hamiltonian spaces really is useful to go to current algebra or to study Manning triples and Deering field doubles also is useful to go to current algebra or if you have a vertex algebra, the truncation up to order one give you also a current algebra or for example, a current algebra give you a, lead, a two term L infinity algebra. That means that appears naturally in higher homotopy structures over there. So there are many motivations of why you should be interested in studying current algebra and Maybe if you are just a Poisson geometer, I just want to say that for many cases to make, I don't know, pullbacks of Poisson structures or to study reduction of Poisson structures, you naturally must go to the current algebra world. So current algebra is something that appears naturally in many places of, of mathematics. So let's now go to our point. So I promise you that current algebra have a differential complex, but where it is? So the point is that we just need to change our point of view. And this is made by this theorem, this several Reuterberg correspondence that says that a current algebra is in one-to-one -one correspondence with degree two symplectic Q manifold. I don't want to explain right now what is a degree two symplectic Q manifold. I will do it in the parallel session. But the important thing is that these graded manifolds, the functions on these graded manifolds have degrees and now the fact that you have this Q structure is just the same as saying that the functions on the graded manifold inherit a differential. So this Q that is increasing the degree 
by one and the Q squares is equal to zero. What happens is that then you have a differential complex associated to a current algebra, just this function with the Q structure, but this is not really <laughs> hands-on. So it's, it's not, it's a, just an implicit description. So can we make a better description of this complex and can we find the Nikartan type formula for the differential, for example? And the answer is that we need to change a bit our point of view and what I want now is just to describe, given a vector bundle with an undegenerate pairing, I can constrain k co chains of the following way, are elements that each k sections of your vector bundle and returns you a function, but now when you swap two elements, they are not skew symmetric, so they are not sections of the wedge as happened for the algebra, but the skew symmetry is controlled by some symbol map. That is something that it's k minus two sections and returns you a vector field. And this is the equation that defines you your symbol map. So now, given a vector bundle with an undegenerate pairing, I constructed the scalar Wallman algebra that I will denote it by C bullet E. And what happens is that the pairing naturally extends to this whole algebra and give you a degree minus two Poisson bracket over there. And in addition, if your vector bundle is a current algebra, then you can create this degree three cochain. That is just the contraction of the bracket with the pairing and the current actions are equivalent to the fact that the, the differential given by just first slot with this trico chain is really a differential. So this equation tells you that d squared is equal to zero. And this is why current algebra have now a cohomology. But okay, I just introduced you for nothing this thing. And I already tell you that current algebra have a differential complex from this perspective of graded manifolds. So what happens? And what happens is that this is our first theorem is that if you have a current algebra, the two differential graded algebras that I introduce here are isomorphic naturally. And the isomorphism is really natural. And the second thing is that really this differential that we construct have a Cartan formula that is really analogous to the Cartan formula for Lie algebra. But now you see since these cochains here are not skew symmetric, if you want to put this bracket at the beginning as many times as do it, then the symbol map starts to appear. So you need to be a bit carefully how to just go from one side to the other. And I want to say that this keller wallman algebra was introduced like 10 years or maybe 15 years early by, by Keller and Stefan Wallman. And they just didn't prove it, uh, this isomorphism because they were working in, in an algebraic setting for current algebra. Okay, so now we can go to the second part that is representations of current algebra. And I want just to give a definition. So given a current algebra E and a vector bundle, I define an E connection on that vector bundle by this rule here that is a section of the current algebra and a section of a, the vector bundle and return just a vector bundle section that is satisfying this Leibniz rule in the vector bundle argument and this linear in the current uh, slot. So what happens is that during many times, this kind of e-connections was appearing in the literature, but the curvature of an e-connection was really difficult to make sense of. So, you know, the curvature, you can define it as usual, just the commutator of this operator minus the bracket of, of the two slots here. And now with our point of view, it's really easy to see that the curvature become and just an endomorphism value to cochain. And maybe since the cochains are not skew symmetry, this was 
part of the difficulties of, of the definition of the curvature of our connections. And now let's make the link of this. So something that I want also to, to say is that sometimes people also require some compatibility with the paving, but this is not something necessary in our work. We believe that it's just auxiliary. So then I want to stress how this is, is related with representation. And then, so given an e-connection, I can define an operator just on the space of cochain tensor the sections of the vector bundle as is do it for Lie algebra, it's everything is completely analogous. And what happens is that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between E connections and these operators here on, on this complex. Moreover, the curvature of the connection is equal to zero. So the connection is flat if and only if this operator here is equal to zero. Therefore, we can say that representations of current algebraids are in one-to-one -one correspondence with flat E connections on a vector bundle as usual. So now, well, and also some Bianchi's identities holds in this, in this setting. Okay, so now what happens is that if I have my current algebra and I pick an auxiliary linear connection, so just a TM connection on E, I can build an E connection on E by this formula over here. And this formula really resembles what happens also for Lie algebra, but without this term, this last term that is coming, let's say, from the cotangent bundle composed with the metric. And the important thing of these connections that are not canonical because depends on your choice of linear connection is that independent of the choice of your linear connection, they are always compatible with the pairing. And they are not flat because this linear connection is just destroying the adjoint property of, of the current bracket. But since they are compatible with the pairing, you can prove that the trace of the curvature is equal to zero when k is on. So you also can build connections on TM and, T, and T star n given a linear connection. And you can put it together and on TM plus T star n, this is also respecting, is just well comport with the paving as, as happened in the previous case. So once we have that, I can go to these characteristic classes that are the cohomological invariants of, of my current algebra. Okay, so the first one is the modular class. So how is the modular class defined? So I need a vector bundle with rank one with a flat connection. So just a rank one representation of my current algebra. And what happens is that this B defines for you a cohomology class in a degree one cohomology class. And this is called the modular class of the vector bundle B. And we denote it by this exciting B. So for current algebra, since we develop a whole Cartan calculus that I will explain in the parallel session, one can see that for wedge top of E, there is a canonical flat E connection given by just Lie derivative along E that of this top form. And this is just like the bracket applying as you expect. So this is just the contraction of E times DE plus, so by the Cartan, the usual Cartan formula. So there are many ways to define this, but it's completely canonical. And what happens is that the modular class associated with this rank one vector bundle is always zero. So this is really different for what happens for current, for Lie algebra, Lie algebra in general are not unimodular, but here the presence of the pairing makes current algebra unimodular. And this is what not surprised because quadratic Lie algebras are always unimodular. And then we are just extending what happens over a point. 
Okay, so I, I want to remark that this was already defining this, this modular class, this intrinsic modular color, was already defined by STN on anti -insure. And they just didn't notice that it's always equal to zero. Okay, so if we don't have the modular class, what else we can do? Okay, maybe we have primary characteristic classes. So what are the primary characteristic classes? This is just giving an E connection on a vector bundle. I just can consider the trace of powers of the curvature. And this gives me a 2K cochain. So what happens is that as in classical theory, first, this gives you really a cohomology class. So a characteristic class. And the second thing is that it's really independent of the connection you choose in order to define this. So if you have any connection on a vector bundle, this class is just intrinsic and will denote it by the char class of B. Okay, and then is a class on degree 2K of it. So what we see in it here is that we have this adjoint connection. So we have given a linear connection on E, we define it an E connection on E, and we define it E connections on Tm, T star M and Tm plus T star M. So our first proposition is that for a current algebra, the primary classes of the E connection on E are equal to the primary classes, to the chair classes of the E connections on Tm plus T star M. And these are just topological, so what happens is that this doesn't have any kind of information about the current algebraic structure. So really don't give you new classes for current algebra or intrinsic uh, classes for current algebra. So then we need to go further and we need to go to the secondary classes and we can define in that. So given just two connections on the same vector bundle, we can produce a Cher Simons type transgression form that this is a, a cochain on 2k minus one of it. And what happens is that you can see that the differential of this cochain is equal to the primary classes of the two connections that we already have. So if the primary classes vanish, then you can create these secondary characteristic classes. And then you have now a way to produce maybe interesting, in, interesting things. So let's go, given a current algebra, then I choose a linear connection on, on E and a positive definite metric. And then what happens is that I get this E connection on E and now by the linear connection, I get this E connection on E. And now I, by the positive definite metric, I just construct another connection as the adjoint using that metric. Then we can construct this chair Simon's frustration forms. And what happens is that we already seen it that when K is odd, the trace of the curvature of this connection is equal to zero. And what happens for this adjoint connection with the metric is the same that the, for K odd, the primary characteristic classes are zero. Therefore, we can construct these secondary characteristic classes. And our theorem, our result is that these classes are independent of the choices that we make. So the linear connection and the positive definite metric are not relevant, so these classes are completely independent. And we call it this, the intrinsic secondary characteristic classes of a current algebra. So just to finish, I want to say that we see in it that for the standard current algebra or even for the twisted current algebra, these secondary characteristic classes are zero. And the first class is the modular class. 
that we define it. So these classes are appearing on degree one, five, nine. So in degree one is zero. And then we are not aware right now of, of any current algebraic that have non-vanishing secondary characteristic classes, but we believe that some examples can be built. Um, well, that's all that I want to talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's thank Mikel for his talk, including emoji. Emoji applause, please, everyone, emoji applause. Very good.